Hi, today we're going to be having a look at projectile motion. I will start off with the definition of projectile motion and then go through some of the core concepts and then we'll walk through some examples and we'll do a few calculations to say, you know, how can we solve projectile motion questions. So the first thing, definition. What is a projectile? Essentially, a projectile is a moving object that moves only under the influence of gravity. The only force, force acting on a projectile is gravity. A projectile will follow a parabolic path, which means it's going to go like, sort of that. So if I take this pen and throw it over there, assuming there's no air resistance, and assuming you know there's no friction or any other force, and the only force acting on it is gravity, this can be considered to be a projectile. Now, all projectile motion questions can be analyzed keeping two things in mind. The first thing is that because the only force acting on it is acceleration, and acceleration only exists in the vertical direction. So therefore, the horizontal motion is constant. It has constant velocity. And vertically, it has constant acceleration, which will be due to gravity. 9.8, it can either be positive or negative, depending on which way it's actually going. Now, just a couple of the key terms of a projectile. So, the simplest example of a projectile is this. Projectile is launched from the ground, goes up and comes down. Now, this is the maximum height. also called delta y, because that's how much it moves in the y direction. This is range. It's also called delta x, because that's, that's how much it moves in the x direction. The other things we look at is the time of flight. The time of flight is how long it takes to go all the way up and then come all the way down. This is then actually the time of flight. Now, just by knowing a couple of these things, we'll see how we can solve projectile motion questions. These are all the equations you actually need to do a projectile motion question. They are actually given to you in your formula sheet, so you don't need to memorize any of them, but you need to understand how you can apply that. Now, a couple of thing keep, things to keep in mind is the fact that the horizontal and the vertical motion are independent of each other. What I mean by that is, I can affect the horizontal without affecting the vertical. Supposing I'm pushing this guy sideways, right? I can just let him go down, or I can push him, or I can push him really hard. No matter what I do, it will still take exactly the same time to fall down, as long as I keep the, you know, the vertical height the same. So I can change the horizontal motion, but the vertical motion will still remain exactly the same. So that's what I mean by the fact that horizontal and vertical are independent of each other. Um, the only thing that is common between the two things is obviously time. Normally, we should always calculate time from the vertical direction, not the horizontal, because the projectile stops because it hits the ground and it's because of its vertical motion. Horizontally, it will just keep on going all the time. There's nothing stopping it. So, let's have a look at some of the examples of doing projectile motion questions now. The easiest one that you can get is sort of like, we have a projectile, all right, and you launch it off the ground. So let's just say we have a projectile, and we launch it off the, off the ground, um, let's say at a velocity of 30 meters per second, all right? And the angle is, actually we'll make this 40 meters per second, and the actual angle is 30 degrees. So the first thing you have to do is, you have to resolve this. This is actually, this velocity is the initial velocity. Um, what you have to do is you have to resolve it into the vertical and the horizontal directions. And the way you do that is this, you use a simple trick. So your 40 meters goes here. You need to find ux and you need to find uy. And this is 30 degrees. If you use this very, very basic trigonometry, you'll actually see that ux it was 40 cos 30 and u y equals 40 sine 30 degrees. Alright? That's just based on simple trick. Um, we actually get that so we can find u x and u y. Now because this projectile is launched from the ground, it's actually symmetrical. 
So it's going to go like that and it's going to fall down. And because it's symmetrical, we can just look at half of it and what it does on the first half is what it will do on the second half. Now, let's say I want to calculate the time it takes for the projectile to reach the top. Uh, I'm going to see at this point in time, what is my final velocity going to be? My final velocity is going to be zero, right? Because it stopped moving in the vertical direction. Okay? So what I will do is, I know that my Vy is equal to zero. Agreed? My Uy is equal to 40 sine 30 degrees. My acceleration is going to be 9.8, and it's actually going to be negative, because the projectile is going up and gravity is pulling it down. So, because the acceleration is the opposite direction to the motion, it's negative, and I just need to find time. It's quite straightforward, we just walk through all of these equations, we can actually see that the first one has time in it, and I have V, and I have U, and I have A. So I can apply that, and I can find my time. And I get zero equals to 40, um, sine 30 degrees, not bad, T minus 9 point, what is sine 30, minus 9.8 T. My U is that, my acceleration is that. So essentially I get 9.8 T equals 40 sine 30, and then T equals 40 sine 30 divided by 9.8. So finding t is actually quite straightforward. However, this is not the total time. This is only the time it takes to go from here to the top. So the total time is going to be that times 2. Gives us the time of flight.